of triumph. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church this morning. Please give Jesus again a big hand of praise and then you may be seated in your heavenly places. It is testimony time. And God is set to give someone a testimony out of this service. You are the one you shout aloud, Amen. Let's receive our brother Peter Mad Madwabuchi Arizia. Akusa Love, Brother Chinonso Okonkwo. Patience Andrew. Patience Ochiho and Lillian Emmanuel. Again, Peter Madwabuchi. Akusa Love, Chinon So Konkwo, Patience Andrew, Patience Ochihu, Lillian Emmanuel. While they come forward, Sister Confidence Joseph is appreciating God for divine preservation and the mantle of preservation at work on this altar. She said she was on her way to the market sometime last week, and then the tricycle she boarded had an accident, flung the person seated in front out. The person actually died, but God preserved her. Give Jesus a big hand for that preservation. Your name and what God did for you. Church, praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. My name is Peter Madabuchi Arizie. I am standing here in presence of the altar of the Church of God to appreciate God for the gift of life, for the bread of life, and the gift of salvation. Secondly, I want to thank the Almighty God. My reason of coming down to Abuja here was for a treatment. I was poisoned, though, by my neighbor. We are sharing the same apartment, poisoning the water. That was the purpose of my coming down to Abuja here from Abba. I want to give God the glory that God gave me sound healing. Now, two, three months ago, while I was on the commanding the day midnight prayer, that in the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul Nenche, mentioned that somebody there has a pain by the side, of the right hand side of the kidney and something that can be also the swelling of the chest. And by the message of God, he spread the word of declaration that this, the healing is taking place right now. I thank God for that, and God did his perfection upon my health. Hallelujah. Thirdly, I want to present, I mean, to appreciate the Almighty God. My coming here grant me an avenue to attend on the foundation class. And after the foundation class, I did also my maturity class. Praise the Lord. And I'm not taking it for granted. Hallelujah. And finally, I want to appreciate the, the, the name of the Almighty God. My wife has been lamenting of I, whatever stretch and all about. The eyes is right and the other part. Last week, I was here on Thursday after some things I came to drop at the maturity class, I came close to the altar here, I prayed, lamented that unto the Almighty God, and even so you see, at the boss, at, by the, and now. and now, the Almighty God have granted her sound health, the Almighty God be the honor in Jesus' name. Eyes cleared, give Jesus a big hand of praise also, total restoration of his spirit, soul, and body, and we celebrate with that testimony. Akusa Long. Yes, please, confirm your name and tell the church what God did for you. Praise the Lord, church. I've returned to give thanks to Almighty God for his help, his preservation in my life. Um, I was engaged to be married 2021, 20, but I was deceived by an unfriendly friend, and then I got pregnant out of wedlock. I was abandoned, my, but my dad didn't give up on me. He was like, no, my daughter, she's a, big, she's a good girl, so I know her, but there was no much support from the... From the correct the um, encouragement I got from the commission, I was I I, I gained boldness. I went to school in Makodi. There was no place to stay, but I, I got encouraged. I went. I went back to school. So with my daughter, there was nowhere to stay. So we stayed in church in Makodi Central for one week. We we're going from from. Well, she became suicidal because of that, and then depressed actually and suicidal, and was considering taking her life until you went to church on one of those Tuesdays, right? And then a song was I have found a place where I can pour my heart. So then I left the service and I knew that I was that was my place of rest. This is my place of deliverance. So I kept following 
with all the services I get following. So before I graduated, um, a semester, a, a semester to my graduation, to my completion of finishing, uh, completion of my exams, I got a job, a job that by merit I, I was not ready for it because my certificate wasn't ready here in Abuja. I got the job, specialist and um, school, special needs. I don't know anything. I didn't read. I didn't read about it in school. So I got the job by favor, and then by my connection to this mantle, I'm a year old now in the job, and I'm thanking God. It came with an accommodation. This month, my my salary has been reviewed. It has just been mercy and grace all the way. Okay. Then um, two weeks ago, in the gym of the night, I had an encounter with mommy in the gym of the night. She was in the congregation talking to a group of people, and I was there. But I was looking at a book, like I was a bit distracted. So she looked at, she came close to where I was. She pulled the book from my hand and smiled at me. So when she smiled at me, I looked up, and then she said I should give her a hug. So while I was coming close to give her a hug, I felt I was too dirty to give her the hug. Then she came, moved closer to me, and gave me the hug. So I, I received the hug. Then that was two weeks, about two, three weeks ago. Then this week, my boss in the office, it was like there's a 50% um, scholarship she's giving for one person, to one person to go, to go study special education, to be certified to be a therapist. And I had passion for the job, and I was like, God, this is what I had wanted. Could I be the one? So I saw the opportunity, I went for it, and she was like, okay, that I've gotten it. And then next week, she was going to talk about it. She's not taking that for granted, she just said. She didn't impact her life by that incident. Today, she's here testifying that God has changed, transformed her, and giving her a second chance. Give Jesus a big hand of praise once more. Chinon So Okonkwo. Yes, sir, your name and what God did for your son. Hallelujah. Such praise the Lord. My first testimony is to return all praise to God for the privilege of connecting to this great commission. Ever since I got connected, my life has not remained the same. As God keep improving me in understanding about whom I am as a child of God, about God, and about the weakness of the devil. Last Monday, devil came knocking, but God is always smarter. My little boy here, that whims, this, they, he was playing with his uh, friends, and before you know, a punch went straight to the eyes. And he shouted and screamed, and I was privileged to be at home then. And when I ran to him, he told me he wasn't seen at all with that eyes. First thing that comes to my mind is to pray. I brought out oil that was placed on this commission. I lay, lay it on his eyes, and I prayed, making demands of this commission for the eyes to be restored. The moment after that prayer, I asked him to sleep, that when he woke up from the sleep, he will see with the eyes. And God did exactly that. He went to sleep. After like three hours, he woke up and sat in with the eyes. Though little medication because of swollen and reddish was done after that. Hallelujah. And yesterday, I went for a program. As I turned back, he, my second, his second open door for me was a kind of, mm, daddy is finally back. And what happened? He said, David was it. He was lying down. Now I got something that my service to God is not just a waste. It's one thing for you to be following God and connecting, serving God. We'll hear a sermon from you this morning. Just go straight to the testimonies. And it's a hard thing for your children to be following. When I came, I discovered he was lying down helplessly, but he was able to miss a communion and an anointing to himself and use sticker that uh, there shall be no loss. Place it on his head. What happened? My head, I can't stand, I can't walk. Somebody that was okay when I left. And now... Join faith with him. I told God, he demonstrated that he had confidence in you. I joined faith with him, connecting to the command of this commission. I lay hands on him and prayed, and he fell under power. By the time he stood up, he told me that a, a dark being just left him. And they spot, he regained constraint, and he was okay. And we have come to the throne of glory to God. As a father, you are the first priest over your family. Laid hands on that boy. Boy fell under the anointing. And the devil was checked back to hell. Give Jesus a big hand as we receive patience, Andrew. Yes, patience. Praise the Lord. 
um, I'm sh I'm, I don't know. I just want to testify to the goodness of God for saving my life. On the 5th of February, I was on my way to work and I had a fatal accident and my left got broken and I had three fractures with a broken shoulder. So since then, it has not been easy. The pain was so strong, but God gave me a supporter. It's my sister and a friend. And God has been so faithful. Every night I connect to the command in the day midnight prayer and the healing was just going speedily. And I get to a point that I feel like if I stay in this Abuja, I won't work. So I travel back home. And since five months I've been there, last month towards the ending and the beginning of this month, I started working. And I just want to give God all the Since that February, she has been on crutches, both crutches, she said, two of them. Two of them, and she dropped them off um, a couple of weeks ago. Today, she's on her feet on this altar. Give Jesus again a big hand for this perfection of healing and what he will yet do in her life. Patience, Ochihu. Yes, your name. And what God did. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Patience Ochihu. I want to return all glory to God for what he has done for me. I joined this commission 2022, last Sunday of, 2020, of April. Before I joined the commission, on Saturday before the Sunday, my senior brother died, my stepbrother. So before he died, he called me on phone that Friday, uh, Wednesday, and he said that somebody wants to kill him, that's headache. He was shouting headache, that says, the, the pastor says somebody want to kill him. And I shout, who is that person? And he said, he said the person is too close to him. And I said, who is that person? That he did not tell anybody about this thing. He's only me that he told. And I, I asked him, who is the person? He, did not, he refused to tell me the person. He said he will call me back and tell me the person. So on, Saturday, on Friday, he said he called me on phone. He, my, he could not reach me. So he called my younger brother that was, was with me. That our younger brother, guess I did that, that he's going to do it on, so on Saturday. So that Saturday, he, he was uh, that Friday night before the Saturday. My brother bathed in the night to, for him to lie down and sleep and he shout. That is the last shout, last shout to the bad. My brother shout. On, on Sunday, on Friday, on Saturday early in the morning. Well, that was an addition to other um, deaths in the family, premature death, and then she was vexed in her spirit. At this point, she's she was connected to this ministry. And then she got a bottle of oil blessed from this altar and went to her father's compound in the village and said, this will be the last untimely death in this family. And she did a prophetic action, went around the compound, anointed the house, and after you anointed the house, you had an encounter. What was it? In the, in the night, I, I had a dream that I saw daddy. There's a, a building in our company that they always keep charm, keep charm there. Then nobody is going there except those people that are operated. So I saw daddy in the night. He entered inside the, inside the building. As he come outside, he come and stand in our company and he smile. And I was happy. So I, as I was praying the anointing, I, I said, my brother said, somebody want to kill me. And I want to know the person. I want to make that person confess within seven days. So as be within the seven days, it was my stepmother who confessed that he was the one that killed the, killed the son. So I want to return all glory. And since then, the incidences of premature death ended since 2022. She said, no more deaths in the family. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every situation of death and destruction in your family today marks the end of it forever. In Jesus' name. Also, while she was pregnant for this baby, she said she bled profusely, but she was determined that she was never going to uh, miscarry the pregnancy. She took um, what material? Certificate of foundation class, tied it to her um, uh, uh, abdomen, and then made demands that the baby was not going to be flushed out. Summary, this is the evidence of that pregnancy and the baby is in her hands. Congratulations. Yes, your name and what God did for you. Okay, praise the Lord, church. My name is Lillian Emmanuel. I am here to return glory to God for sparing my life. On the 1st of August, I slept and I 
had like a, spe- a, a voice that this is my last month on earth. Then I woke up and I prayed against it, but I did not take, really take it serious. Then I came back from school on the 6th of August. That was on Tuesday. I lie down in the evening. After I finished showering, I lie down to rest. That was it. I couldn't breathe. Then my friend came to my room to check on me and she found out that I was lifeless. So he rushed me to a school clinic. There I was on oxygen till tomorrow, till the next morning. In the realm of the spirit, I saw myself going. I saw myself in the village, was about to be buried. And I saw a banner with my picture on it and written 13th of August. This was on the 6th of August now that she became lifeless, breathless, lifeless, taken to the hospital. And then from there, she slipped into another realm where she saw all this displayed. So, while I was standing confused, an old woman came and was dragging my, me. I was then following her. When we, then we reached a stage, there was a river between that I should follow her till we crossed the river. I told her I was not going to go with her. Then my, one of my mom's younger brother, because then my parents were praying. Everybody was praying for me. Even my pastor at Dunamis Church, Akunza Marabalafia was praying for me. Then I refused. Then my uncle came, called my name, and asked me to come back. The woman refused to release me, so he dragged me from her hand. Then I saw the woman first. She's a woman from my village. Then I came back to life that very day, the next, very, the next day. In the evening, I could not breathe again. That time I was having seizure, I was just coughing. And I was taken to specialist hospital, Lafia. There, I spent two days on oxygen. On the third day, on, during the commanding the day midnight prayer, according to my mom and others that were there, that Papa mentioned that there was a lady in specialist hospital, Lafia, that is lying down lifelessly. He declared life. Then I came back to life. When I came back to life, I could not talk. I could not, like I was just lying down lifeless. I, could, I was not even caring, but I was breathing. Then everybody was praying. I said, God, you said I should come back to life. I'm alive. How am I lying like a vegetable? I kept singing in my heart that you are there to help me. I cannot die. This is almost my final year in school. I cannot die like that. I kept saying it in my mind. Then in the evening, that's on Saturday. My mom went out to get something for, because my friend was there with me. So she was sitting down there watching me crying. Then I saw Papa standing with a white cloth in the hospital there. I wasn't sleeping. He stood and he said, Lillian, I turned. She turned, look at me. She asked me, what is it? I was using sign to communicate with people. I told her somebody is there. Somebody is there. She said, who? I said, he's wearing white clothes. She said, okay, listen to what he wants to tell you. And he said, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? I said, yes, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus can heal? I said, yes. He said, tell your friend to bring the anointing oil that is blessed from this altar. And she took the anointing oil. He said, tell her to put it on your tongue because I cannot do anything. She blessed it on my tongue, on my ears, on my neck. Because that time I was feeling as if somebody was taking my life. So when she put it there, I started talking small, small. And he said, um, he gave me chapter, um, Bible verses, Psalms 35, that says that the Lord will fight for us. The Lord will fight for me. And he also gave me Psalms 91. And the last book he gave me was Jeremiah 29, 11 which says, I know the plans I have for you, say it the Lord. After that, he said, tell her to give you the anointing oil again. And she gave me the anointing oil. I drank the anointing oil. She rubbed it on my body. Brethren, I came back to life. He said, say Jesus. I said, Jesus, I can talk. I said, I can talk. He said, say Jesus, I can hear. And I am here to give God the glory because I am back to life. The spirit of death practically humiliated. God is real on this altar. 
doing wonders. 13th of August came past, 13th of September passed, 13th of October passed, more 13th of August coming to pass, and she's alive on this altar. If God can raise the dead, he can heal the living. If God can raise the dead, he can heal the living. I shall not fear, I shall not die. Everything that needs to come alive in your life is coming alive. Every foul spirit of death is arrested. In Jesus' precious name, you shall live and you shall fulfill your days. Jesus' precious name, you will not bury your child. Give the Lord a praise. Arise. mighty